Coming up, Jonathan and the family head to Grand Cayman to follow up with Guy Harvey and his Stingray City Research 10 years later. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. The waters surrounding Grand Cayman are a scuba diver's paradise. There are beautiful, healthy reefs, mysterious beckoning wrecks, and a wide diversity of marine life. One of the signature species of Grand Cayman is the Southern Stingray, made famous by Stingray City, a place where divers can interact with this species. The Cayman Islands are located just south of Cuba, in the heart of the Caribbean Sea. Ten years ago, I visited Stingray City with marine artist and conservationist Guy Harvey, who showed me how his foundation has been monitoring the health of the stingray population. Guy Harvey is one of the world's most well-known marine artists and he happens to live on Grand Cayman, where he operates an art studio and gallery. Now I'm heading back to follow up on the stingray research 10 years later. But this time, I'm bringing the whole family. And today, we're gonna get a look at Guy Harvey's private studio in Grand Cayman. It's looking pretty cool. Hey, hey! Hi. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, Guy. Good, good to see you. Great, welcome back. Hi, Jessica. To How are you? I'm the kids. Welcome, welcome. You are. Hi, Elise. Elise, hi, Elise. Oh, Liam, welcome. nice to meet you. Guy's Great. studio is full of treasures collected during a lifetime of adventures in the ocean, but the artwork is what makes it unique. Guy is right in the middle of a new painting as we arrive, so we get to watch the master at work. So what I'm doing here, Jonathan, is uh, a green turtle in the open ocean. It'll, this is just the start of it, of course. It'll have a bunch of fish around it. But because plastic in the ocean has become such a large issue, uh, we want to, as you know, a group of environmental artists, so to speak, na nature artists, to highlight the issue of uh, pollution, but especially plastic in the ocean. Ten years ago, when I first met Guy's daughter, Jessica, she was wrangling stingrays for our segment. But now she's the project manager of the Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation. And my job with relation to the stingray study is to organize the logistics of it. And so we have volunteers that come, we do the measuring of the stingrays, we t scan them so that, because each one has their own pit tag. Um, so we've followed some of these since 2002, which is pretty epic. And those have been known since for years beforehand. So they're really old animals. So you try to catch every single one? Every single one. And you it take inventory, really, measure yes. them and everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because that's the assumption is that you catch all that you can see within a three day span. And this is this is one of the longest term studies of its kind, right? I right, mean, yes. Of a it's the longest running study of a wildlife interactive marine wildlife interactive site in the world. Um, which is and you do need that because they're long lived animals. And if so many people depend on them for their economic benefit, then they need to be looked after. So are you guys excited about seeing the stingrays tomorrow, Liam? Yeah, excited, yeah. yeah. The next day we hit the marina early and load Guy's boat for an adventure at sea. Oh, 
It's hard to miss Guy's custom painted boat. It's a short ride to Stingray City. Then Guy puts me to work. Immediately the Stingrays start coming to the boat. They know what's coming next. Stingray City is a shallow sandbar protected by a barrier reef. All those black spots in the water are stingrays. Since we're working in the shallowest section of Stingray City, I won't even need any scuba gear. We can actually stand up here. As soon as I hop in the water, the stingrays come right over. They're looking for a snack. Guy is a world-class fisherman, so when he feeds the stingrays, they only get top quality fish. They are so soft and squishy. <laughs> They're completely the opposite of anything that feels dangerous. Confident that the stingrays are harmless, Christine and the kids join me in the water. We do have to be careful where we put our feet, but only because we don't want to step on a stingray. As Guy throws some food in the water, the first pieces are eaten by fish, because they're the fastest on the scene. But it doesn't take long for the stingrays to move in and vacuum up the rest. hands me a piece of fish to attract the stingrays close to the camera, but a big female gets it away from me almost immediately. Guy comes in the water to show me how it's done. Oh, look out. He's got a handful of chum. He's going to be the most favorite. He entices a big female over, then teases her into swimming around him. Eventually I get the hang of it. She's not stealing this piece of fish. <laughs> Meanwhile, Guy demonstrates how they catch the stingrays for research.
So, so this is fully adult. You see how small he is, though? Yeah. Yeah, kind of cool. I feel like slippery this one is too. Some of them are very slimy. Ooh. See? So when we're holding them, they can, they can get away from you really quickly. The tag is right in the base of the tail on the on the left side. Yeah. Where it leads to this. And we use a scanner to scan them in a pond in the boat. And then we measure their, their disc width across so that we got data for some of these animals for 17 years. So we wow. track their growth, yeah. Same animals come back time and time again. Um, Females may stay up to 10 years, males may stay up to 3 or 4 years, and they move on. But this is an open system, you, see, you don't see any fences here, right? No, they can come and go, yeah. Cool. And at night time, these guys, <clears throat> the males may go 2 or 3 miles in a night. We track them, and then they come back here. Where the females kind of, they make a bed near the sandbar and sleep the night, because they don't need to go and forage at night, because they get fed in the day. So we kind of changed their behavior from that perspective, but it's not altogether bad and uh, the population is stable. We have Good. about a hundred animals here on any given day. Wow. Yeah. So the class, they're called claspers and sharks have these too, exactly the same. So gotcha. think of this as a flattened shark, kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alrighty. So I let him go. Yeah. Cute, yeah. cuddly flattened <laughs> shark. <laughs> Next, Guy catches a small female. And a juvenile female. They outnumber the, the male seven to one here. But she's not near mature. They're about 80 centimeters on that mature. Very cool little. But how old do you think that one is? She'd be, uh, I'd say three or four years old. Oh, yeah. wow. so they come out as fully formed miniatures of their parents, uh -huh. about eight inches across. Uh -huh. Yep. And they're ready to go. There's no parental care. <laughs> You're on your own. They are ready to go. But they have them not, not out here, but more in the shallow protected areas over by Rum Point over there, uh -huh. or by Barkers over there. Oh, okay. Nice. Because uh, too shallow for cutters. Now it's Christine's uh, turn to try holding uh, one. Keep her head in the water. No, that's it. Oh, <laughs> he's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. And you're gonna get it. Alright, we lost the sun there. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Cool. <laughs> now, these animals, just to be clear, these animals are acclimated to this kind of behavior. Very much so. Yeah. If you tried to do this with anywhere, a uh, stingray it's anywhere it's else, they'd not <clears throat> gonna be leave. standing for it. No. They're, they're, you're trying to pick them up. This, yeah. That's not a good no. idea. No. Don't do this at home. <laughs> The kids point out a stingray with a split lip, a scar that forms an obvious permanent ID mark. Looking through my footage, I realize that I filmed this same animal back in 2009, 10 years earlier. Nobody really knows how long these animals live, but the long-term study here at Stingray City will probably provide some answers. We bid farewell to our flattened shark wannabe friends, hop on the boat, and head back to the dock. Stingray City is unique in the world. It allows people an up-close encounter with wild stingrays in the ocean. This unique situation allows for the long-term study of stingrays, which in turn has given us a much better insight into these animals' biology. The Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation conducts research on large fish and sharks all over the world and has made numerous scientific discoveries that help us better understand the mysterious inhabitants of the sea. The work at Stingray City is their longest-running research project, providing valuable insight into one of the most strangely lovable creatures in the blue world. Hey everyone! Thanks for watching our latest episode all the way to the end! Hit that subscribe button now so you won't miss our next episode! And check out our new second channel, Blue World Plus, for some awesome behind-the-scenes vlogs and extras.